Hey everyone, I'm Danny, and welcome to Wizardry Workshop. In this DIY video, we are going to be making the Advanced Rune Translation book. This was a required textbook at Hogwarts for the study of the ancient runes, which was an elective course that Hermione took, and she used this book to study for it for her sixth year at Hogwarts. And fun fact, the Quibbler ran an article called The Secrets of the Ancient Runes Revealed, which uh, the runes were upside down, so Luna had to turn the Quibbler upside down, and that's why you see her reading it upside down, because of the rune article. So, yeah, fun fact. Don't forget to leave this video a thumbs up down below if you do like the video, and if you're not subscribed, go ahead and consider subscribing. We do a whole bunch of Harry Potter DIY uh, projects, and every single movie replica that I make, the templates are absolutely free to download. So if that's something you're interested in and you're not subscribed yet, consider subscribing. Anyways, I really, really like runes and like anything divination, tarot cards and all that stuff. So let's get into this one. We are going to need quite a few things to make this DIY because we're going to be doing the book binding all by ourselves and, and everything. So as I go through the video, I'll be showing you the different supplies you're going to need and I always link them in the description box if you need to order some supplies to make this. Anyways, so here are the templates. We've got the cover right here, which I printed on cardstock, single-sided. We have the spine, which was printed on regular paper. Um, this is one way to do it. I'm going to show you a different way to do the spine as well. And then we have two copies of the end paper, which is also on a heavy cardstock paper. And of course, that's not all you need when it comes to the templates, because this is a fully readable book. We also have all of these. This is a fully readable book that is over 200 pages. I did not write this. I gathered a bunch of information off of uh, Wikipedia, but um, I did lay this out um, and I, it took a long time to get all this just just right so yeah I hope you guys like it anyways when you print this out you are going to print all of the pages in the order they are in the PDF document that you download and um, it is going to be double-sided on regular paper there is uh, two disclaimer pages at the very start of every template so just skip those and print from page three on and once you get all the pages printed out, what you're gonna wanna do is take every four, like four pages is a pack which is called a signature and it's four pages of paper. You're gonna fold them all in half and the way you're gonna tell that you're doing it right is that the shape of the book is the first page of every signature, which is gonna help us cut this out later. So as you can see, every four pages, we've got that shape of the book all the way down to the end. And then the very last signature is only going to be two pages, but all the rest of them are gonna be four pages. And as I was doing this and I saw that this book was ending up to be over 200 pages, I was trying to figure out the best way to cut these out because it's such an interesting shape to this book. I considered using uh, my Cricut, uh, you, you might have a Silhouette or a Cricut or some, some die cut or die cutting machine. But in order to do it that way, you would have to run each individual page through and to make sure that they all line up properly and everything, it just seemed like that was gonna be such a tedious task to do. So I decided to cut out each individual signature together. So that, that means we only have to do this 15 times rather than like 115 times. So it's gonna be a lot easier. We're not gonna use the Cricut for this. We are just going to use a pair of scissors to cut along this shape on every signature. So that's 15 times, it's not gonna be so bad. I even considered using a little handsaw to try and cut it all out at the same time after printing, but it doesn't really work out very well. It doesn't look very good if you try it that way. I just grabbed a stack of papers and tried it. Doesn't really look good. So really cutting out the individual signatures is probably the most practical way to do it. We're also gonna have to do the same thing on the cover and the end papers. Before you do anything else, we're gonna be binding this book and everything, but before you start, it would be a good idea just to flip through each page and make sure that they are all in the correct order. Depending on what tools you have, you can cut this out in a different way. I have a big 
paper cutter that can cut through all of these all at once. And what I'm going to do with that is cut this line and that line all together at the same time so I don't have to do those individually. And then I'm going to go through and use scissors to cut the shape of, out of all 15 signatures. If you don't have a big, powerful paper cutter like that, though, you can just go ahead. What I would do is uh, get a ruler, a metal ruler, an X-Acto knife, and then just cut these straight edges first, and then again go through with your scissors and cut the rest of the shapes out. Normally, you would, I would bind the book first, and then once this whole packet is, would be bound together, that's when I would do my cuts with my big paper cutter. But since this is such a unique shape of a book, we can't really do it that way. So yeah, that's why we're going to do our cutting first, and then we're gonna sew these together. Once you have all of that cut out, go ahead and recycle all of the paper scraps. So here's what we have. Um, it doesn't look exactly perfect, of course. If you, if you look up close, it's, it's not exactly lined up because I used scissors, but it looks all right, and that's fine with me. <laughs> so now we're going to get into the actual binding of, the, of, this, of the interior pages here. So again, make sure they are all in the, in the right order before you start this. So what we want to do is get them all stacked up and as straight as possible. And once you're happy with that, go ahead and take a large clamp and clamp them together right at the bottom, just like that. Um, if you have another one, it would be good to clamp a couple more times if you can. I, I, I can't find my other large paper clamps, so I'm just going with the one. And then we are going to measure and mark a few places on here. We just want maybe a half inch in on both sides here, and I'm going to mark with my blue pencil. I'm going to mark all the way down, so it's going to mark on every page, just like that. And this is just for reference. We're never gonna see this after we're done. And then I'm going to put two more marks in here, about three quarters of an inch in from that first line here. We go one half inch and then a quarter inch more. And then we're gonna do that same thing over here, one half inch and a quarter inch more. So now we have this marked, and this is where we're going to do our binding. And you know how I mentioned a small saw? <laughs> we are going to use this. And this, we are going to just cut a tiny bit in on all of those lines. We want to try and cut through all the pages. So there's one, two. You just want to try and go in enough that you've cut through all the pages. You should have something that looks a bit like this now. So since all these pages are folded in half, like this, we've just made a small hole in each one of these places on all those pages. It is safe to now take the clamp off. We're gonna take all but the very last packet and place it here. And now we have this um, signature, this very last signature here. You kind of want to just flip it over, make sure that it's gone all the way through, and it hasn't made it all the way through every page. So now it's time to correct that. If you have like a little thumbtack, you could do that. I have an awl, and this is actually for book binding. I'm just going to make sure all the holes are completely through. And now we can start sewing. For this, you need a pretty thick needle. Um, and it's, it's better if you have one that has like a large hole on the back to get the thread through because we're not going to be using just regular thread. I'm going to be using this crocheting thread. It's thicker and, and sturdier than, you know, just regular thread. So this is going to help uh, the book stay together once we're finished. So we're just going to take a long piece of this thread and you want to thread your needle. It just goes, obviously, this is for people who don't know anything about sewing. Um, the thread is gonna go through that hole on your needle. And now we're going to uh, double up the thread. So just let the needle drop there um, since it's looped on already. And we're gonna take the two ends of the thread and just hold the, them together and then 
pull it like this very carefully so it doesn't knot up and grab a hold of your needle here. So now we have our thread doubled up and then we can go ahead and go back to the end right here and put a double knot in this end of the thread. If you have wax, which I do not, you can wax this so that it'll go through um, and not bunch up as much, or you can kind of wet it a little bit with like a rag or a, a damp sponge or something like that, just to make sure that the threads stay together. Don't saturate it, just kind of like make it a little bit damp and it'll get the, uh, the th two pieces of thread from this double up to sort of stay together. And now we are ready to start binding. We'll take our very bottom signature and we're gonna go in the very top hole from uh, the outside of the signature. So that's gonna go through there, like that. And then we're going to go through the next hole from the inside to the outside, like this. Just like that. And then, if we're just going to continue on with that pattern, go through the next one from the outside to the inside. And then we are going to go through the very last hole from the inside to the outside, like this. Pretty simple. And then we're going to continue that, so we're going to go back to the, the previous hole, but this time go in from the inside to the outside like that. So by the time we're done, you'll see that every hole has uh, a length of thread between it. So we're going to go ahead and go back to this side and go through here like this, just like that. And then we're going to go in through here. So we're back to that first hole again, and we're going through there. And now, like I said, there is thread between every single hole here. Now we're going to make a small knot here. So we're gonna go under what we just, we just came through from the back here, and we're gonna go under this length of thread here with our needle. Keep a small loop though, don't, put, don't go all the way through because we're gonna go back through that loop with our thread and our needle. There we go. And we will just pull that tight like that. So now we've made a small knot, whoops, at the top right there. And then we can just take the needle and go back through that hole so we're back on the outside of the signatures again. So now you should have your very first uh, signature done. And the rest of them are not gonna be exactly the same as this. We're gonna do uh, something a little bit different. This is actually called uh, kettle stitch. There are different ways to stitch a book and uh, this looked like a, a pretty simple one to do. So this is called the kettle stitch and this is what I'm gonna go with. So with that first one done, we will take the next one. So now again, we're gonna go in through that top outside hole to the inside hole here and pull it together like this. And then we're gonna go to the next inside hole here, push the needle through. And then, this part's important, we're gonna go under this stitch right here that we made, under that, that loop we made down there, like this. And then around where that stitch is like being held together in here and we're going to go back through this one so we just went basically under that stitch right here from the original signature we just went through this length of thread around where we stitched and up through the next length of thread and then we will go back through that hole on the current signature to the other side pull that one through and now we'll go to the next one and just do that same thing. So we're gonna go through the inside 
under that middle length of thread on the first signature and then up through the last length of thread on the first signature just like that and then through the hole on the current signature that we just came through like this so now we should be here and then we'll do that one more time on the last hole in our current signature. So once we get to that, that last hole on this second signature, you go through the hole and underneath this length of thread, just like before, just like we've done through all of these, only now obviously there's no more, no other length of thread to go back through. So this is where we start on a new signature. So we'll grab the next one and then we will start at the bottom this time. So now we've come through the bottom and now we're attaching this signature on like that. So again we're going to go back through here on the next hold down. Instead of obviously going through that bottom signatures uh, th thread, we're actually going to go just the next signature down all the way through this. This is how we're going to do the rest of the book. And we're just going to go under that stitch for the, the next signature down. So I'm going under it and then coming back through like this. And we've just gone under and then we can sew that together. So that's our new stitch. And then we go back through that same hole again. We go through the next hole and just keep doing that same thing we just did under and through the previous stitch back through the hole. And then the same thing for this last hole. And then for this last one, it's very similar to the, uh, other ones we're just going to go again through or basically under the previous stitch there and now we continue with the next signature we do the same thing going this way and we just keep going back and forth with each signature just like we just did until the entire book is bound and if you didn't like <laughs> my tutorial on this uh, kettle stitching there are plenty other ones. They go in a lot more detail. Now, once you get to kind of almost the end of your thread, you want to tie a knot like this right here. And we're going to get it as close to that end signature there as possible, as close, as close to the last like stitch that we did as possible. So there we go. We've got a knot in there now. Now we can safely uh, cut that off. Go ahead and re-thread your needle just like before. And then I'm going to actually just go back through the previous hole just to kind of get it started again. Go over to the next hole and come through. And then we are ready to start the next signature so we just continue on. All right, so I have finished this. I just pulled my the last thread through right here. We are going to loop underneath, just like we have been doing, right under that, that last uh, stitch that we did on the previous signature. And now we are going to go back in through that hole that we just came through. Now we are going to go um, under this stitch like this and we're going to be tying a knot just like we did on the, f I believe it was the first signature we did this. So there we've got a little loop right here and we're going to go through with our needle and tie a little knot right here in the corner as close to it as you can get and then back through that hole one last time. Just like this. 
There we go. And then pull it until you feel the knot kind of pop through. So now the knot is on this side. Okay, so now we have all these kind of threads right here. Just trim that off. It doesn't have to be perfect. We're just kind of trimming, trimming it down a little bit. Next, we're going to take a small piece of fabric and try to find like a good like woven fabric like this, not like t-shirt fabric, something kind of sturdy. And we are going to reinforce the spine with this. Um, and I also have some rubber cement here. I'm gonna be using rubber cement. You can also use wood glue or you know whatever adhesive you'd like to. So I'm just gonna brush a tiny bit on here first, like this. There we go. So I'm just kind of like br also brushing down the, uh, the, the loose like threads and things from when I had to sew things off. So the cloth is going to like wrap around like this on the book. Um, however, before I do that, I am going to use a, a tiny bit of hot glue on there too, just as even more like reinforcement to make sure it stays on. So I'm just going to put some hot glue on here. And put a tiny bit more glue on the outside. And we also want to take some of this glue and glue down the sides of the cloth that uh, wrap around the book as well. We want this to wrap all the way around the book. Now that I have that all glued, I need to wait for that to dry, maybe about 20 to 30 minutes. So I'm just going to take a couple of these paper clamps and set them down like this, and then set this sort of like on top of that so it's sort of raised up a bit. And we'll set that aside and let that dry. And while we wait, we can work on this stuff. And we want to cut all the white off from around the book cover and like the end papers and the spine. Just cut all the white from around those. Oh, and I forgot to mention when you're cutting the two end papers, and I forgot to do it, we actually just fold it in half like this and then cut them at the same time so that you get that shape, um, which you can still do now. I'm going to go ahead and do it now, but this should have been when you were just cutting it out in the first place. Sorry. So if I hadn't forgotten to do what I had planned to do, this is what you would fold it over, cut around the white, and then unfold it and you have the full end paper cut out. So now we should have the front cover, the back cover, the spine, and two end papers all in the correct shape. So let's set aside the spine and the end papers because obviously this is not thick enough for the cover of the book. So we are going to be thickening it with this um, black uh, artboard right here. It's black on one side, white on the other. What we wanna do is cut out two of these two shapes like this. So I'm going to line up the side of this with one side of the artboard that's already been uh, cut straight and I'm going to clamp it on like this. So now I can sort of use that as a guide as I'm cutting and you may need to sort of move the clamps around as you do this just to make room for your ruler and your exacto knife and whatever you're using to cut this out. And you're gonna have to go over this quite a few times uh, with an X-Acto knife to get all the way through. There we go. And here comes the fun part. It's not really fun. We're going to, uh, we're gonna cut this shape out here. And I'm gonna use probably a combination of scissors and this. This is a a little cutting tool. It's a swivel uh, blade, so you can kind of like draw shapes with it as you cut. And I'm going to try and use this to draw the shape on here to get it started and then maybe finish up with my scissors if, it, if it's a little bit too hard because this is so thick, but we'll see. Okay, so now I've got it kind of started with that blade. Kind of got that shape in there. I'm gonna remove the actual cover from that and then I'm going to cut the rest of the shape out following along with the cut that I've already made with my scissors. 
you are going to want to take a sharpie and color the edge of this in because well if yours is like mine how it's like white on the edge you would you don't want any of that to show and not only just the white edges like that if yours is white on one side you're also going to want to color in about this far in so that if any of that ends up showing in at the end of the when we're finished you don't want any of the white to show and there we go so that should do it right there and the idea is to glue this on top of that but we're not going to do that just yet we are going to need two of these so do that again this is still a little sticky but it's pretty close to being dry looks pretty good try not to bend the spine too much just yet and the speaking of the spine um, there are two ways we could do this we are going to use some book binding tape for some parts of this now so just go ahead and get some black book binding tape and this right here if you can see it's a little bit shiny this is the backing of like sticker paper or label paper and I save these when I use them I have a whole stack of it because if you ever need to do anything with tape you can stick it onto this uh, sticker paper backing and it sticks on but it peels away very easily as well so it's very useful for that so here is our book binding tape here is our spine and we want to just cut it down to be the same height we are trimming the book binding tape down to the correct size so that the top and bottom are straight across and are just the right size for that spine and now you have a choice to make because you could do a couple of things so we could use this that we printed out as the spine or you could use the book binding tape as the spine which i think the movie prop does from the pictures i've seen that's what it looks like it looks like book binding tape over the spine but it also has these two stars and this symbol on the spine itself so i get, i've given you the option to do it this way with paper if you want to put the book binding tape over the spine and then glue the paper over that so that you get the same kind of look but on the movie prop these are gold so I've also got a gold marker here and you could try and draw that shape and those stars right here on the spine or you could use a die cut to cut out a stencil and try and color it on I don't really know the best way to transfer it over I thought like sticker paper with gold on it but then th those could fall off pretty easily i it's just really difficult to think of what could work with the book binding tape which is what i want to do so what i'm going to do is i am going to sort of practice drawing these things on these pieces of the of the tape just to see if i can get it to look right and if i can i'll draw it on there if not i'll use the paper honestly um, if I can get the stars to look a bit better, I'm pretty happy with just hand drawing that on the spine. I think that's going to look a lot better than just the paper. It'll have that gold shine to it and everything. So if you're, if you're wanting to do that, what I have here is a Deco Color Premium uh, Gold Foil Marker. So it's a, basically a gold paint marker. But yeah, it looks pretty good, and I think that's what I'm going to go with. So I am actually going to keep this tape stuck to this sticker paper. Just wrap it around the book where I would be actually taping it down. I'll grab a large clamp and clamp that on there. So now I know how uh, wide the spine is going to be. And I'm going to go ahead and draw that on there. So there's how mine turned out. Now we can set that spine aside and continue on. I just messed up two times. I started gluing these on here before I realized, wait, I was going to wait and do that till the end because we've got to attach these to the book first. So there's, there's some glue on there, but it's fine. But then I also 
got started on the other on this next part and I wasn't recording. So now I'm going to do this the right way and record and show you guys how to do it. So I'm going to line this up on this side where I want it. And I'm also going to line it up on this back side here. Oops, where I want this one. Once you have these exactly where you want them, you're going to want to use your clip again to hold it on. And then we will use some black book binding tape to attach it. So just grab a piece of book binding tape that's a couple inches long like this, place it against the spine, and then pull it down really tight onto the cover boards. Make sure you kind of push it down on the spine as well. Let's grab another piece of tape and do a second one right here at the bottom, just like that. And now we can take the clamp off. And so we've got those cover boards on there. And I also want to use some book binding tape right here on the inside as well. As you're putting this tape on, kind of tuck the uh, tape into the edge there, because there's a little bit of an, of an edge where there's that hinge and then kind of just shape it to that as you're taping. Let's do that again with another piece of tape at the bottom, the same way we did that first one. I've just adjusted the spine there, uh, the, how tight this was wrapped around because it was causing the book to just pop open like a spring. So now it's, it's a lot um, looser and it works better that way. So yeah, don't pull it too tight around the spine on second thought on the outside. Now we want to open up to the inside back and do that same thing. And now the spine design that I've created here, we can just take off of that sticker paper and line it up with the spine and we are going to stick it down. There, now we have our, our spine on there. Next, we'll do the end papers. So for these end papers, one goes in the front, one goes in the back. We are gonna need some scrap paper. I just ripped a piece of scrap paper in half. So we'll take one of these uh, pieces of scrap paper and place it right inside the book right there. And that's to protect the interior pages. And then again, we're gonna go for the rubber cement and we're gonna do the uh, cover of the book first. So this inside cover, we're just gonna cover the cover <laughs> with uh, rubber cement. And we'll take one side of this end paper and line it up with the cover. So that is good. Now we are going to glue this side down over here. Again, cover it with the rubber cement. We want the pages just to be completely stuck together and as flat as possible. And you might have some where you can see the white like this, and that's fine, we will trim that off. Now let's do that same thing to the inside back cover. All that's left to do now is glue on the cover and the back cover. Again, we will need some uh, paper, some scrap paper, which I'm just gonna place inside the front and the back of the book like this, just to protect any of the rest of the book from getting glue on it by accident. And then we're gonna use some more of this rubber cement to glue this on. And make sure you get all the edges, you want all the edges to have glue on them. And then you can line up the cover art and press it down. You do wanna leave that scrap paper in there for now. And we are going to glue the second side down as well. So now we have the front cover on there and the back cover, and we're gonna let this all dry. And while we do that, if you have a book press, you could put it in a book press. If you don't have a book press like me, <laughs> um, I did get a couple pieces of just some, some wood where I can put the book in there. And I have these clamps here. I'm just gonna put it in between the wood and then I'm gonna use the clamps to tighten the wood together to sort of press the book. So I'm just gonna put one clamp in each corner here. Now I'm going to let this sit overnight so that the book gets 
pressed and, and flat so it doesn't just pop open, and then also to let all that glue dry. And speaking of that glue, um, if you're using rubber cement, make sure you use it in a ventilated area or you have some kind of like mask to protect yourself because I just uh, had to leave this room because I've been in here for hours working with it without a mask and I had my door closed. There's no windows in here. So it actually got me pretty lightheaded and my ears started to ring and stuff. So yeah, make sure that you do that safely. <laughs> But anyways, let's let this sit overnight and come back to it tomorrow. And this has sat overnight now, so I'm going to go ahead and take it out of this little press, homemade book binding press here. And we'll see what it looks like. Take the papers out of here. So as you can see, after being pressed, it does sit closed. It's not going to pop open. If we open it up to the first page, we've got our end paper here, and then we go in through the book. It's pretty simple to flip through. If we go to the back, there's actually a, uh, an index back here, right here, a rune index. So if you're looking for a specific rune, you can find the page number and just flip straight to that. I don't believe there are any references to the interior of this book anywhere. So um, I just took creative liberty and laid it out how I thought it might actually look if, if you were to read this book. Um, and there were no references to the end paper really. I did see, I found one picture online from uh, the Warner Brothers Studio tour where this book was just slightly open and you could kind of see the end paper. So I tried to find one that was similar colors, but again, it was just a sliver of it. So it was, you know, it's not gonna be exact one-to-one, -one. but yeah. And that is how you make the Advanced Rune Translation book. As usual, I will be giving away this book that I made today. So if you are interested in winning the Advanced Rune Translation book, there's a giveaway link in the description box below. And down there, you'll also find my giveaway link for the 70k giveaway. We are approaching that very quickly. That giveaway is for the Accio Box book covers, which fit the first edition American hardbacks. And I'm also uh, including the entire hardback set of Her the Harry Potter books that they fit. So you'll get everything you need right there. I really hope you guys like this one. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.